Welcome back everyone. In the previous video, we discussed about how to go ahead and display all of the categories, how to do the query for the categories and, and display them. And in this video, we're going to talk about the single page. So if you remember from the previous one, the description of the playlist will be there in the, in the description box. You can take it from there. If you haven't watched the previous one, we have created a single page, right? So currently we are sending the user to this URL with the ID in case uh, if he clicks on a single page. And we just have single being displayed over here. So let's just pull our layout because if you remember, layout has the header and the header and the footer. I don't think we have the footer, do we? I'm not sure. Okay. So we've got the layout and this is single page. Let's see. Awesome. We've got the single going on. And uh, now um, we're going to go ahead and to Layout, you already got the layout, so we need to have the category name and the products. We're going to need the with router as well over here. Okay, so what we'll do is just say with router. Okay, and then of course you need to pull the with router from the next router because we are dealing with routes. So import with router from <clears throat> next router okay you got that awesome and we'll just do props we'll just pass our component inside of this so props and then just do this okay and then what you need to do is basically go ahead and uh, put this layout back again. So we'll just say return and just say layout. Okay, now remember what we need to do is basically go ahead and display all of the products that are related to this particular category and also show this category name. So for that, we need to go ahead and do a query, right? So how do we do this? Okay, so let's get back to our graphical and we're gonna need the product category, a single one. So let's try to search it over here, product category, hit enter and there you go, this is the one. So we're gonna write a query which is product product category there you go and if you notice the moment you put the query over here it already opens up that for you so it tells you what's inside of this so if you check the main thing is the id first we need to pass id because remember we are querying a product category with its id we want one of the ids only so then you can pass so this tells you what are the query arguments it accepts so it accepts the id uh, which is mandatory it, it can also accept more accept more things, but what is mandatory, which is mentioned star over here, is the ID. Okay, so we're just going to say ID over here, and remember we need the product category IDs. Where do we get that from? So if you remember, we have it here. I'm just going to take that and uh, put it here. Okay, and I can collapse this. Awesome. Now, what do we need inside of this? So, what we really need is basically the name of the category. So, just type name. So you can see now it's filled, and then you let's check the name for you. What else do we need? We need the products, right? We want all of the products which are there in this category to be displayed. So, I need the data for that. So, I'll say products, and if you observe the moment you hit enter, it opens up that product for you, so you can see what's inside of it. What I'm really looking for is basically, I think the first thing we need to look for is the, the edges. And then inside of edges, we have node. And it's because remember, it's a connection that we're building, okay? And inside of node, I have different options available. So I'm looking for ID. I'm looking for product ID. Then I need the slug. So all of this information you can see over here. Product ID, ID, slug. So I'm just taking all of that. 
then I'm going to need the description. Then I will need the image of the product. And the moment you hit this, it tells you what's inside of the image. So from image, I need the URI. I need title, source set, and source URL. Awesome. Hit the query, and there you go. You've got all of the information. You've got the, pro the category name, the products inside of it with their ID and all of the data that we asked for from GraphQL. That's brilliant. So let's just add this query over here inside of our component, which is a single page per category. So on top, we can say product category, product by, you can name it whatever you want. It's up to you. Category, category, sorry, ID is equal to GQL because I need to pass my query. So Okay, so let's pull the GQL from, you guys help me, GraphQL type, yes. Okay, then what we're going to do is just write query over here. You can name it whatever you want. I'm putting it as product, query, and then we're going to need to put the ID because remember we need the you need the ID to be passed dynamically. So how do we get this actually? So this is the type in GraphQL. As you know that GraphQL is based on the type system. So to avoid errors, they when you write a schema, which is already written for us, thanks to WP, WP, uh, WP GraphQL WooCommerce plugin, uh, because uh, they've all, the author has already made the schema for us. Otherwise, remember how much time it would have con consumed to write all of this uh, schema. So the ID is the type ID. So that's why we mentioned that here. And uh, then you need to put your query inside of it. So we, we could have done like this, like query, but it's not needed here. So now all I have to do is just put this query right there because we've already written the query. And let's just change this to dynamic variable. And that's it. And now, you guys help me, what do we do next? Think about it. So, we've got a query ready. We have got a component, which is a single page per category. We want to show the category name and all of the products. So for that, we need to go ahead and make a request to GraphQL server and ask for that data. And we have been doing this already. So how do we do this? Well, Say category dot get initial props async await we do async await with error function okay and then over here we'll say const result is equal to await and then we're going to need the client, Apollo client, to do the queries. We've already written a client. We're just going to import from Apollo client. Await client.query, and it takes an object like this. First thing it takes is the query. And the best part is that we've already written the query. We'll just use that. And it's going to need the variable, right? So because we want to pass the ID dynamically, we need to put variable over here and we need to put an ID. So let's create one on top. Let's keep it empty for now and just pass it here. So how do we get the ID? So let's do this together. Think about it. Where is the ID available for a minute? Yes, you guessed it right. The ID is available in the URL. So we just had to pull that out, right? Awesome. So uh, if you've watched my next year's video, or if you already know about this, you know that you have something called context available here in your get initial props uh, function, right? 
and you know that the get initial props first get rendered on the server side and we have the context available and context would contain your query parameter which will include its slug because when we are redirecting the user we are saying that you know go on to this url uh, categories and the inquiry param inside of slug they are passing the slug along with the id so we just have to separate these two and just pull the id out of this slug right so in the context let me show you what's available that's it okay let me console context for you so like I've already explained, it's available server side. So if you check now, there you go. You've got the entire context available. Now we don't want everything. What we're interested in is the query. If you hit query, there you go. You've got the slug and you've got the clothing and then you've got the ID separated by the dash because that's what we put over here, dash. So let's pull it off. So what we're going to do is come over here. We have the context and we have our slug available. So let's say const. We're going to pull the query first. And instead of query, we have the slug available, right? And we're going to pull that from the context. And we're going to, we're going to do a check Let's say const id okay let me we already have it here okay we'll say const id if slug is available then just use the javascript function which is called split and split it from dash because dash is the one which separates the id from the slug it gives you it returns an array containing two items after the separation, which is the slug and the ID. So I want the last item, which is the this one. So the pop function is going to give me that last item, which is the ID. And otherwise, if that's not the case, if the slug is not available, then context.query.id will give you the ID. Okay. Awesome. So you've got the ID that's being passed and all we have to do is just return an object and whatever you return from here, the data that you return will be available to your component as props. And then you can just use that data to loop through and just show the category, all of the products that are related to that category. Awesome. So what we're gonna do next is we want two things. First is the category name. So say category name. I mean, you can get all of the data here and just do all of the logic in the component, but I think it's best that we separate this out here. <clears throat> so res that dot data. So where do we have this available? Let's have a look. So we have res dot data, and then we have product category. I'm gonna put that. Then we have a name. That's what we're looking for, right? We'll put that. And then we need the products. So let's say products. And then let's say rest dot data dot res dot data dot products dot oh sorry res dot data dot product categories category and then the products and then edges and I think that's it for now. What are, we miss, what are we missing over here? So let's start data dot product category dot name. Awesome, nothing is missing. Let's console because we discussed that we can get this information in props. Let's go back, refresh. Okay, are we missing something? Variables must be an object of JSON type. Okay, let's see, what did we miss? So it's saying that the parameter variables must be an object or JSON string. So this, we have to pass it as an object. So put it, make an object, put it inside of it, and that's it. Let's see, loading. 
res is not defined okay we give this name as result let's change change this to res great so have a look are we missing anything else no we don't awesome so let's see what we get so we've got the category name and that's what we asked for we've got the products and that's what we asked for awesome now the reason we i got this products in a separate one because we spoke something about reusability with React components. And if you remember, we have already created a component that allows us to render different products. Uh, over here somewhere, this is the one, right? So now we can actually pass product and we can loop through each item. So it saves our time because we don't have to write CSS again. We don't have to create component again. I can just import that component here as well and we can use it right so let's do that so we'll come back over here and we've got the all of the data that we need all we want to do is just loop through and display that data so let's do that in the next video I hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up leave a comment if you have any questions and do subscribe to my channel turn the notifications on you know the drill well I put in a lot of efforts uh, to build this to help people and of course it always encourages me if you follow me on twitter if you subscribe to my channel if you just give it a, just show your care show your love by giving a star to my repository or just following me it just motivates me so so i would appreciate if you do subscribe to my channel and just follow me and give it a star and uh, i'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to discuss about displaying all of the data Brilliant. See you in the next time.